This video will give a brief overview of topics in the ethics of data science. This is a huge area and will only cover a few interesting aspects. There's lots of recommended reading on the course page if you want to go deeper. Stories about tech companies breaching users' privacy are commonplace these days. One of the most famous examples is the Cambridge Analytica scandal, where a British political firm used the personal information of millions of Facebook users in order to build voter profiles for the Donald Trump presidential campaign. They obtained most of their data, which was 87 million user profiles, from an app called This Is Your Digital Life, developed and deployed by an academic at the University of Cambridge. The app was more or less a personality quiz, and the people associated with Cambridge Analytica got thousands of people to take it using Amazon's Mechanical Turk, paying them a few pence for their time. In order to use the app, you had to give a permission to view your Facebook profile, and based on this and slightly more sophisticated versions of ideas we've already discussed, it let researchers associate personality traits like openness, conscientiousness, or extroversion with Facebook likes of brands, people, or organizations. Using this, analysts could correlate particular personality profiles with liking certain things, and thus tailor adverts for particular users. For example, imagine they had found that people who scored highly on aggression tended to like Nike. This is a made-up example. By placing targeted ads on Facebook, that is, asking to show your ad to users who like Nike, political campaigns could show those users' ads where the candidate was portrayed as tough on crime, for example. This app is all perfectly within the terms of service, and the main privacy breach was a transfer of data from one party to another, from the University of Cambridge to Cambridge Analytica without the permission of the app users, and also, somewhat, the way in which the app visited the profiles of the user's friends without their permission. Due to this and other scandals, Facebook is expected to be fined up to $5 billion. This fine might have been for transferring data, but what about the idea of political advertising on Facebook in the first place? A lot of these ads don't look like ads, and very specific voters in key districts and demographics were targeted in ways which haven't been possible before. What would you have done if your supervisor had asked you to work on something like this? There are dozens of other serious scandals that you can find with a quick search. For example, Uber was using its customer data to construct their God's View technology. This showed them when and where people traveled, and they were using it to track a reporter investigating them, as well as celebrities, politicians, and others. Here's a picture of what it looked like. This was in 2011, and since then, concerns about privacy have become louder, so that things this blatant are hopefully not as common. Another slightly different example is the popular fitness app Strava, which, because of public check-ins and workout logs, could be used to track people, among them US military personnel. Here's a picture of a secret military base in Afghanistan, which could be found by looking at where the soldiers were jogging. Neither of these cases involves stealing data from users, they simply took data users were already giving, performed some simple collation and analysis, and suddenly produced something which the users had never intended to reveal. Big data analyses can also have unintended consequences. Predictive policing algorithms have been shown to unfairly target ethnic minority neighborhoods. The problem here is that these algorithms are trained on historical policing data. Thus, what is predicted isn't crime, but rather existing police practices. If the police spend a lot of time in certain areas, the algorithm sees this and uses this as a proxy for crime, and thus suggests that police should spend a lot of time there, making the algorithm circular. Despite these flaws, predictive policing algorithms have been growing in popularity. For people who don't know how they work, algorithms give a sense of being unbiased and impartial, yet they can be just as biased and just as partial as anyone, not to mention lacking in accountability and transparency. So data reflects both the real world as it is, as well as the biases of those collecting and analyzing the data. It's all too easy to think you're working on abstract numbers. Another similar example is data-driven teaching, which, despite massive investment, failed to improve student outcomes and led to huge teacher backlash. In order to fit students into an algorithm, they have to be reduced to numbers. Ultimately, this means test scores are the only things that matter, and this has had adverse effects on both students and teachers. All of these examples show that malicious, careless, or badly conceived uses of data can have detrimental effects on society. Your work as a data scientist is not simply carrying out technical work, turning the crank on some machine learning method. Those abstract numbers often represent real people, and what your analysis says about them can have real consequences. A good data scientist has to think about their results in their proper social and cultural context, and communicate the potential biases and pitfalls to the consumers of their analyses. If you're working on data that affects people, you can't just be a number cruncher.